I don't know, you know, I'm a little disappointed that I have I didn't figure this out like a long time ago because I've always known better than to listen to the mainstream people or the teachers or parents or doctors, etc. <clears throat> because most of them are all talking mainstream level. They say, no, you orgasm. Man, it's so relaxing, it's so good. Look how good you feel afterwards. Like, it has to be good. Yeah, you just shot a major drug dose of dopamine. That's why it feels so good. But do you notice, can you detect, first thing, <clears throat> before I say that, is anything it's even in the word orgasm spasm it's like spasm asm it's like in the word it spasms the nervous system i made a short i don't know if it's up yet about uh excessively orgasm look life's backwards everything that you read and hear about like 90 percent, it's like wrong because people see in such narrow, limited way, they don't have any sense of uh, vastness, you know? So, so they, like a lot of doctors or, you know, medical people say, no, the orgasm, man, it's like, um, that's gonna help your, uh, your prostate. If you, if you don't orgasm, then you're gonna have problems, problems with your prostate. Like, are you serious? It's the opposite, spasm, again, Spasm the prostate, like spasm, spasm, spasm. Okay, it's gonna get weaker. You're preserving your energy, <clears throat> right? Like, how's your prostate gonna get messed up? So then the mind says, yeah, but it's the pressure, it's the buildup. Yeah, well, you gotta go through that. It's like saying if you're training for the Olympics or, or some elite level competition, you, you're like training to get better. So what? So then you're going to say, well, the training's too hard. It's like, it's hurting me because it's like hard. No, you got to go through the training to get to, to, to your full capacity of what you can do with your body or in your life, etc. You got to like, it's training. This same thing, preserving your semen's training. So yeah, there's going to be some pressure there. So what? You'll have a nocturnal dream, a wet dream, and it'll release it. And then the people, oh no, I had a wet dream. Well, like, man, what do you expect? You're in training, you know? So I uh, was gonna say something. See, all these ideas come and then I, I have to choose somehow, like which, which stream am I gonna flow in? But we were talking before about the orgasm. Uh, I think the doctors are saying it's like good for you and all this stuff and everything's backwards. Orgasm spasms your nervous system. You're shooting a very uh, concentrated amount of dopamine all at once. This is what I was going to say. Anything you do, any drug, it's like this 5-MEAO, it's way too fast of a come up. I mean, you go from like ordinary state of consciousness and then you're transported into, to, you know, <laughs> dimensions that you can't even understand. Like that takes a toll on your nervous system. Yeah, you, if you do that stuff too much and see what happens. You're just going to be shot out, you know. So anything that has, uh, compared to like if you drink um, uh, ayahuasca brew or San Pedro brew or something like that, even, even THC, smoking it is just like direct hit to the brain. It's much better to make a tea or something if, if you have to do it. I, I don't like doing it. Like ayahuasca or San Pedro, it's a whole nother level than, than uh, marijuana. So that's what I'm saying. The orgasm is very intense and very fast. It's what, six, seven, eight seconds. That's fast. That spasms the nervous system. So one can't expect to like feel balanced and feel an inner, you know, completion on some level or stable if they're constantly like spasming the nervous system. It's impossible, you're not gonna do it. And I, I, I've like, I don't know why it took so long for me to figure that out. Like I wish I would have known like in my teens or 20s, because it's very common sense. Like, well now it is, if I look at it, because I'm seeing things with <clears throat> different, um, I have a different CPU than I did when I was younger, but it just, now when I look at that, it's like so, it's, it's such common sense. How can you 
spasm your body in such quick way and then expect there not to be some consequences, especially if you're doing it like for years, every day. It's like, it's like you're, you're an addict, you're an orgasm addict. So then you gotta go to withdraw and dopamine. Now I'm not, okay, before I say that, just pay attention after one orgasms, man or woman. For women, it's even, it's even more intense. They have even more nerve uh, centers down there. They can become, you know, sometimes they say, they say, well, I don't have semen. Man, that doesn't matter. We're talking about OGIS. We're talking about spasming the nervous system. That's, that applies to all genders. Doesn't matter. That's across the board. That's what we're talking about. Spasming your nervous system and then losing OGIS. OGIS is the main structure that holds the whole body together, the essence. So pay attention after you, after you orgasm, do you notice like you feel like, yeah, you feel good for seven, eight seconds and then you might feel good after that for a little bit because you just, you feel relaxed. But that's not a natural relaxation. It's like doing benzos or something. They, they force you to relax. It's not a natural relaxation. When you're natural, ch naturally chill, it's 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 because you're not like thinking all the time. You don't have a restless mind. You have a healthy lifestyle that gives you balance. This is why this is why you you that that relaxation's good because there's no price for it. You're not paying a heavy price to get a pseudo sense of relaxation. Whereas that's what you get when you do certain drugs and orgasm, etc. All right. I know how the mind works though, see? So then people, because they're already asking, they say, well then, number one, you realize it's impossible just to swear off the orgasm. You can't just swear it off. Again, Olympics, it's training. You work your way through this. So then the question is, well, how often should I do it? <laughs> That's on you. You have to figure out your timetable, your, your, your schedule. And then be open to that changing as you get more evolved. It gets more easy. The person training for Olympics, their first, you know, week or month compared to like after a few years, they're on a different level. This, this life is training. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to st stop doing something that's so deeply rooted in our biology and uh, then think it's going to be easy. Or you can't just, or anything in life that's worth really having it takes some time and, and grit to, to uh, and come into this, this new character. So you have to allow that. So you just figure it out how long, how often you can do it. Obviously it's better to do it with the woman you love than alone because you reciprocate some of that lost energy by absorb, absorbing her energy. If she loves you and she's surrendered, she's giving you nice energy. You get that. So the deficit's less. If you're doing PMO, no, that's low level. That's poison all day long. If you have to, if you have to ejaculate, just look at a white wall or something, <clears throat> or go out in the woods. You don't want to. You don't want to stare at that screen. You got to start somewhere and progress from where you're at, and then you figure it out. Oh, I did. Okay, once a week, I'm cool. Then after maybe a few weeks, you're like. No, man, I need to step this up. Why, why? You may not even feel like doing it after a week. But yet the mind will say, well, it's time. But you're like, no, no, I'm stretching it now. I'm going to, it's maybe two weeks. And you just, you work that. You, you have to work things in your own individual way. There's nobody in the planet that can give you some written commandments when it comes to like, don't lose your semen or don't lust. It's super individual. Look at all the different, the different trainings in, uh, uh, that, that uh, athletes go through. It's all kinds of different tra trainings, high ele elevation training, or some are at the coast and the beach, some weights, some, they just spar. That's all they do. Like, what's his name in MMA? He just won the title, man, from, from the uh, Adesanya. Sean Strickland, yeah, he's a trip, isn't he? He just spars, that's all he does. That's just all he does, and he won the title. <laughs> so there's no standard. Same with this journey. There's no standard. Nobody can give you written instructions on what's best for you because you're you. You have your own individual uh, process and, and uh, nervous system and karma and health, 
situation and life situation and uh, mental horsepower and just everything. Like how, how is somebody gonna figure out all those ingredients for you? You have to, to, to uh, start paying attention and listening inside and doing experiments to see. You can't rely and have a false dependence on other people telling you what to do. It's just not good. It's not going to work. You have to, you have to become master of your own self. This is, uh, is going to happen anyway. It's just a matter of time. All right. See you.